Hey, welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you're doing well. So I thought we would start a new series about, about watches on this channel. Um, the I'm combining two of my real passions. I really do love traveling and I also, as you probably know, love watches. So I thought I would combine the two and create a new series about places to travel if you if you're love watches. So places to travel for watches. And the first location that we are going to be doing is going is Geneva, as you probably can see in the title. Um, so uh, that's going to be the topic for today. I thought this would be a cool series because if you are someone who, who does traveling or is looking to travel, and you can kind of combine your love for watches with the travels that you end up doing and see some of the really cool sites that you can, you can go to. So um, like I said, this one is going to be on Geneva. We're gonna create some other ones as the series continues. So. Um, I'm looking forward to starting this honestly and if you have ideas of places that you want me to, to discuss put them in the comment section below it really would help us out to, to, to make this series about um, things that you probably are going to want to learn about so if you are new to the channel uh, welcome to life on the wrist we create videos about just about anything and watches so um, if you are interested in those types of videos be sure to check out our channel and the other videos that we've made um, and while you're doing that, be sure to hit the subscribe button and um, give us a big thumbs up for our new series. It really would help us out. So um, Geneva is, is obviously one of the, the bedrocks when it comes to um, watches in the world of horology. Um, if you are not familiar, Geneva is located in Switzerland. It's in the southwest part of Switzerland in the canton of Geneva. Um, this uh, city is where the Rhine actually exits uh, Lake Geneva. So um, there's a really great... Um, it's a really beautiful area to live in. Um, there are approximately 500,000 residents there, and this is in the French-speaking uh, part of the of Switzerland. If you are not really familiar with Switzerland, there are multiple languages that are spoken um, within the country. There's German, Italian, and French, and this is obviously in the French part. So, um, a relatively small city if you compare it to other places in the in the world. However, um, Switzerland is a smaller country, so you can't really expect anything less. Um, it's been the center of watch making for an extremely long time and um, one example is there are a lot of headquarters that are located in Geneva. Um, this is, you know, Geneva has uh, claims to, has a, a laundry list of claims to fame when it comes to um, a lot of firsts within the watch industry. As an example, the first wrist watch, wrist watch was ever produced that was ever produced was in Geneva. The first first quartz watch was produced there. Uh, the first water resistant watch was per, um, produced there. The the, the world's first uh, thinnest uh, watch. Obviously, that continues to change, but um, the 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 thinnest watch was also produced there. The smallest watch was also produced in Geneva. So there's, they have a laundry list of firsts when it comes to watchmaking because watchmaking really did take place there. Um, there's a, um, a, a, a town, um, Plan Le Huit, uh, Plan Le Huit, I probably pronounced that incorrectly, but this is where a lot of company, watch companies are located and it's com become almost like a zone for, for a lot of the watch companies. Companies like Patek Philippe, Rolex, Piaget, Bama Mercier, Fred, uh, Frédéric Constant, uh, Vacheron Constantin, all of these brands are located within this area of Geneva. So it really is where a lot of companies have decided to um, have their headquarters and why why not when it when there's such a rich history of watches within this area um, also uh, there is uh, a watch group the Richemont group is actually based in Geneva which encompasses a lot of different um, watch brands are also located in this area so one reason why going here would as a watch collector would be to see all of these headquarters I know a lot of the times you can tour a lot of these manufacturers and headquarters and and this is a perfect way if you are ending up going to Geneva maybe stop by at some of your favorite companies that are located here um, and check out the check out their headquarters I'm sure that they, they are they want to educate as many people on on their companies as they possibly can so if it was me I would definitely uh, check out Vacheron Constantin as it is my favorite Holy Trinity watch company but of course I would go to, to Patek Philippe and Rolex as well because why not um, I'd probably try and hit all of them uh, just because of I would have to take some time off in order to hit all of them and, and enjoy them to the fullest, but um, because I love watches so much, I'd probably try to hit them all. So um, the first thing I would definitely do is check out all of the headquarters. The second um, thing to do in Geneva when it comes to watches is checking out the watch events. Um, being that there are so many brands that are located in Geneva, they have a lot of events that go on. As an example, SIHH 
is a watch show similar to Basel World where they um, watch companies showcase their watches that they have produced for that retail year. I believe it occurs in February, I could be wrong about that, but SIHH takes place in Geneva and is a per perfect opportunity for, for someone who's interested in watches to go and see what is on the cutting edge of all these brands. They, they oftentimes release some very interesting pieces. A lot of the times there are some prototype watches that you can actually go and check out there as well. So it really shows you what the brand is really working on that on that time, at that time. Um, so SIHH is something that takes place there. Also GPHG is a, um, is a watch award show where there's various categories and um, a panel of individuals who are obviously very knowledgeable within the watch industry choose the winners of the watch that have been nominated for each of the categories. I actually have made a video, uh, I've made a video previously about the 2019 uh, GPHG uh, watches and I decided to pick the ones that I would uh, vouch for as uh, a member of the panel. So if you are uh, interested in my picks, be sure to check out that video. Um, but that the GPHG takes place in Geneva as well. So that's another thing that you can do. I believe it is in November. So we're spacing them out a little bit. Go in February for SIHH and GPHG in November. So um, I'm giving you multiple opportunities here. Um, so that's a, an event that you can also um, go and check out. There are also a lot of watch auctions that take place in Geneva. Um, I know that Christie's does watch auctions there. If you are into the vintage watch space, I, this is an opportunity for you to perhaps add watches to your collection, see some very interesting watches, or just be around people and be able to talk about watches with, um, with some other people. So um, watch auctions are another thing that you can, um, another event that you can attend when you are in Geneva. So watch events, SIHH, GPHG, and auctions are ways in which you can be involved within watches in Geneva. And then obviously the biggest one uh, is um, re there are a ton of retail stores that are located um, in Geneva. You just have to walk down the street and I'm pretty sure you'll see at least one. Um, I think buying a watch in Geneva would be a very cool experience. Uh, I think it's a cool way of saying, you know, I went to the center where watchmaking is and I decided to buy a watch there. Uh, there was actually a video that I remember watching of uh, Vacheron Constantin telling a story about a guy who went to get his watch serviced and he went to Geneva to do it, but it also ran us through a little bit of the history of the um, Vacheron Constantin line of watches and the, the, the types of people who purchase them and the way in which the care that Vacheron Constantin takes when, when, when they do uh, services. So um, this is, uh, that was just an example of how you, know, you can go to Geneva and really be immersed in the, the watch culture for sure, just by going and purchasing a watch there. It also is a really cool story. So if I was, if I, you know, went, if I had you know, a son, I'd, it'd be cool to go to Geneva, buy a Patek Philippe and pass it down to him. That way he knows, you know, it came from Patek Philippe, which is based in headquarters in Geneva. I purchased the watch from Patek, the Patek Philippe store and was able to pass it down to him. I'd probably tell him that he needs to make sure that he goes back to Geneva to get it serviced um, with the watch. I think that would be really cool, um, obviously you know, might be unrealistic to some um, to some degree, but would be a very cool story. So um, retail stores are all over the place. It's a great place to buy a watch because you are already immersed in the culture with all of these uh, accolades and headquarters located there. So last reason is why I would travel to Geneva is because there are so many retail stores and you can go and experience watches and most most of the time people are very forthcoming with just sharing watches with you, allowing you to put them on, telling you about them. And they're not always looking to try and sell you a watch. Um, so you can really bounce around stores, see what you like, try the new watches that you're on. If you go around SIHH time, if they are already in the stores, you can go and you know try them on in the stores, the ones that you saw at SIHH. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to kind of just, just really immerse yourself within, within the, the retail stores uh, as much as possible. So just to summarize, Geneva is a great place to go if you are into watches. Um, it's really the, you can call it the motherland, the fatherland, the, just the place where watch making was really born. They have amazing accolades that they have, um, that they can say that occurred in Geneva. There are also a lot of brands that are headquarters there. Um, so you can go and tour the factories and um, learn about the brands if you, have, if, you, if you are interested in seeing the way in which they're manufactured. There are also a lot of events that you can attend like SIHH, GPHG, and auctions that occur there. If you are into the vintage watch market, auctions are obviously a great way to, um, 
to, to get exposed to that. And also, you can immerse yourself within the retail experience that is watches. I think it's a very different retail experience to other types of retail experiences like clothing or I don't know, furniture or art. Um, this is a completely different environment and I think being in the, in the center of watchmaking um, will make your experience that, more, uh, that much more enjoyable. So um, I hope you do end up getting to Geneva. I'll be very jealous. Be sure to send us some pictures on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, however you want to send it to us. Be sure to send us some pictures uh, and let us know how it was. Um, and if you have made it this far and you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this video and be sure to give us a thumbs up. It really does help us out. Just destroy that thumbs up button. It really, really does help, uh, help out these videos. Um, gives us motivation to, to, con to continue to do this because we're helping out so many people there who are watching us. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.